Mobility 44, but we're going for flexibility. In fact, we're going for a wee bit of everything. Upper body focus today. We're going to get straight into using the foam roller. Nay farting about the day. Okay, so it's not the best camera angle for the foam rolling. I usually have it on the floor. However, you can still see me. And if you have been keeping up with this, you should know this one off by heart anyway. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to foam roll basically my whole back but more predominantly the upper back. Now remember, picture that skeleton everybody. The rib cage ends round about here. We do not want to venture lower with a foam roller because all we've got there is that exposed part of spine and we don't want to be putting all our weight on that on the foam roller, okay? So don't go any lower. We're going to start at the base of the, uh, the rib cage and we're going to work our way all the way up to pretty much that shelf of muscle at the top of the shoulders, okay? We're only going to be doing it for a couple minutes, so chances are you're probably not going to get up that far. You know your problem areas. If you have been doing this for a wee while, you'll... Ah! There's two of you! <laughs> right, okay, anyway. Back onto this. Back onto this. So I'm going to bridge my hips up. Okay, now remember the golden rule here. Do not let that lower back go into overextension, okay? We don't want it to be curving away. That's bad. So we need to keep a bit of tension. So if you prod yourself in the stomach, you shouldn't go, ha. Oh. So keep a bit of tension on the core. But what we are gonna do is get a big bear hug on the go, spreading out all those uh, upper back muscles. And then all I'm gonna do is go side to side. And this is where if you've got one of those big long foam rollers, it's gonna be a bit better. You might have to find yourself find yourself you don't have to find yourself it's not that kind of class you might have to move yourself manually on your foam roller okay now if you look at my position pay attention to the camera for a second because i know you're all going to be working at your own pace so i'm keeping that lumbar spine the lower back nice and neutral yep but what i'm going to try and do is with the rest of my spine on the upper back is in your th your thoracic spine is overextend wrap it round the foam roller see how i've done that that takes a bit of thought, everybody. You have to be switched on with this one because if you try and overextend the spine and you end up doing what I've done now, problem area, lumbar spine's overextended. No, 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 okay? So a good way to do it is to put a flat palm on your stomach and a flat palm underneath your lower back and just make sure when you are wrapping that upper back down over that foam roller that there's no change here, okay? You shouldn't feel any sort of change or your hips drop. So now I'm going side to side Okay, and this is where it's down to you. Look at my arms. Okay, I can move them around. So I'm going to find that sore spot, which there are plenty of. Now I'm going to go straight up to the center of my back. Why? Because I know that's for me where I've got all my problem areas. So hopefully if you've been doing this a wee while now, you know exactly where to target. If you don't, start at the bottom, side to side, find a sore spot. Then what do we do? Usual foam rolling malarkey. Okay, you're going to hold it. You're going to contract. You're going to relax. You're going to try and put as much weight on that sore spot as you can. Then move the arms around while holding on that sore spot. Now, chances are you'll have to lean off to the side to find one or a few of them. So please work hard. Now, some of these are probably going to be sitting there going, my neck, my neck. That's because you've got a big heavy head. Okay, I'm only kidding. Your head is heavy. So on that note, it's okay to have your neck back and rest the the head on the floor. We don't want to be straining our neck muscles, but at the end of the day, they are working to hold the head there, okay? So play around with your position, okay? There's no right or wrong. I've got that sore spot on the go, so you can see that I'm overextending, and then I'm flexing my spine, curving it in and out of the foam roller while keeping that lower back where it's meant to be, okay? Fixed in position. Don't move on a spot until you feel an improvement. Okay, and when you find a sore spot, you will find a sore spot. And this is where the foam roller is good for general area work, okay? This is as good for the whole upper back area. But it doesn't quite get into the nooks and crannies the way that ball would. So this is why, you know, think of the foam roller as scanning the area, okay? Having a wee bit of a search, you're finding a bit of problem, okay? And then usually you would get the ball and get stuck right into that problem area if you feel the foam rollers not getting into it. So again, I'm not gonna talk you through everything because by now you should know what you're doing, okay? It's about being creative. I've got that sore spot, I'm putting all the pressure on it. 
I'm not just doing that, I'm contracting, I'm relaxing. I'm also trying to manipulate my spine around the foam roller. Then get your arm nice and straight, move it around while holding that spot and you'll find that it just opens it up a little bit more and you might just find the perfect angle. Okay, I don't want you to feel that there's a set way to move on this thing. What the hell is that noise? Bloody magpies today or crows or something. Jeez, oh, it's like a trip to the zoo. <laughs> it was absolutely silent out here five minutes ago. But as usual, I've hit the record button and out comes nature. Okay, so I want you to copy me now. Okay, I'm going to move this all the way down to the base of my rib cage. Yep. Now I want you to get your arms straight above. Keep them completely locked out. I want you to put them straight above your head. And then I want you overextend, and this is where you're going to need to watch your t-shirt doesn't get underneath it. Start working your way back. And if you find a sore spot, quick side to side, making sure you're keeping those arms straight until eventually you find yourself at the base of the neck. Don't put too much weight on that neck. And then I want you to go back again. Go back again, find any problem areas. Why are we doing this? Because I want you to use this time now to identify, geez, oh man, any problem areas for future reference. Okay, well done, that's that done. Okay, thoracic spine mobilization, using the foam roller to break up that tissue is good for general around the area, okay? Now what we're gonna do, so I'm doing a wee bit of everything this morning. You could do all that if you had plenty of time and you wanted to make it your focus of the day with the ball. Find the sore spots, right? There was one in there. I'm going to lie on the ball, get on that sore spot, usual stuff. I'm not going to explain all that because hopefully by now you know what you're doing. What we're going to do now is target the neck and upper trapezius, okay? So I want you to start here, work your way down, along here onto those meaty part of the shoulder, okay? That area where a lot of us walk around with a lot of tension, yet I guarantee most people will find a lot of painful spots in and around here or even up there. The reason I'm telling you to start here and work your way down is because I know for me personally, I'm not really gonna find much up here for me, but as soon as I hit around here, it's gonna be hell on earth. So for me personally, I'm gonna go straight on there. You're not gonna be able to see anyway because I'm gonna be lying on it. So I want you to make sure you're not putting it on your spine. It's obvious if it's on your spine because you're gonna feel it. Okay, so I'm gonna lie back. I'm just simply, rather than roll about on the ball to get it in the position, you can use the hands. So get the ball, push down on it, nothing's there. Nothing's there, where's that spot that I'll, oh, there it is. Right, okay, so I've found pain. So now I'm just lying on the ball, okay? And what I'm gonna do before I start doing all my usual drills is just move around ever so slightly around that area to make sure I'm on the dead center. Okay, the spot in which is the most painful. And I, I have got it. So you could be up at your neck, working your way down. Okay, and as I say, we're gonna spend quality time trying to improve the painful spot rather than just work as quick as we can through the whole area. So now what am I doing? Now I'm staying relaxed. It's horrible, I found my painful spot. You might still be looking around for one and that's fine, but as soon as you find pain, and it probably won't take you long to find one, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna lift my bum off and I'm gonna plant my feet and that's gonna help me push more weight down onto that ball. Now make sure you do that gradually because if it's too painful, you'll find that you're tensed. I want you to try and completely relax so that this ball is sinking into your back and those muscles are just wrapping themselves around. So we're still working around the neck region, right up in those upper trapezius. Okay, those big muscles that you feel, the big meaty slabs of muscle that run across the top of your shoulder girdle that run down your back. We got a lot, a lot of tension in them. Okay, so I'm contracting and I'm relaxing. Contracting the muscle, relaxing, and what I mean by contract is squeeze it. Tense that muscle group up, okay? And if you've never done that before, it might take a wee while to work out the coordination on how to do that, okay? But this is horrible. For me personally, I won't lie to you, it's feeling rather blech. The pain is blunt, horrible, and it's feeling pretty sick. And that's before I've even started doing the worst part, okay? So I've put all the weight on it, I'm putting as much weight on it as I can still, I'm staying relaxed. Now it's time to take it to the next level of pain and discomfort, but effectiveness. 
So I'm going to get my arm and I'm going to point it straight up towards the sky with a completely... If I pass out, okay, give us a few minutes. And if I don't uh, respond, just hang up and leave me. Okay, so I'm keeping that arm completely locked out. And I want to make sure you're keeping the shoulder in the joint. Okay, now again, you can't see where I've got this ball because it doesn't matter. I've showed you the general area you're working on. As long as you're holding a painful spot just now, you're going to get something out of it. So the same rules apply here. Pushing my weight down on the ball, staying relaxed with this arm straight up now. I'm going to put the arm straight above my head, as in towards the floor. And that, people, is going to take some effort to try and stay relaxed. And that is just downright awful. I will not lie to you right now. And then I'm going to take that arm and I'm going to move it straight, still keeping that arm locked out, and move it across to the opposite side of my hips, okay? So I'm going to touch my hips, and then I'm going to keep that process going straight above, down, and I'm just going to really smash that area, and it's going to be brutal if you're holding it, and all I'll say is, do your best, do your absolute best to stay relaxed throughout it. Okay, we're only going to do another few seconds, so get the most out of it. Try and grin and bear it and do your best to switch off from that pain. Try and tune out of it. Try and separate it from what you're doing, which is not easy. Okay, everybody, I want you to relax so you'll sit up. So if you were going to feel the ball still there, I thought it was stuck to me. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure for most people, you're going to find a lot of painful, horrible spots. In fact, pretty horrible pain, but in a good way as well. It does take a lot of grin and bearing, but you've got to try and focus on your breathing, relax, and separate your mind from the pain, and just try to stay relaxed, because as soon as you start wincing and tensing up, um, you're defeating the purpose, okay? So it's down to you. Obviously, the more pain you can tolerate, the more you're going to get out of it, and we're all different in that regard. So I'm going to change sides, and again, we're working from basically just the base of the skull on all that meaty bit of the muscle running down, and again, the upper part of the trapezius here at the top of the shoulder. So you find the spot that works for you. For me there, we're only doing this this morning for really enough time to get the most out of one spot, okay? So all that time there was me just holding it on that one painful spot. Now again, from experience, because I've been doing it a wee while, and you have too, hopefully, you can find, or you know roughly, where to go looking, okay? You know the areas that you're gonna feel pain so you can just get the ball jamming straight in there. And again, for me, it's not so much the neck, it's more that upper trapezius. So I'm gonna have a wee dig around and I don't have to go too far. So I can feel pain, but what I wanna make sure before I commit to that area is that I'm actually on the dead center of the pain, okay? Because I mean, it can be pretty damn sore just off to the side of it and then you go a wee bit further and that's when you nearly barf up your breakfast, okay? So to say. So all I'm doing, I'm just having a wee fart about like I do, as I like to do, making sure that I'm actually on the right spot. Okay, so I'm on it. I am on it. Not too bad just now, but then that's because I'm just lying down on it with not a lot of weight. Okay, so now the fun begins. I'm gonna bridge my hips up. That's gonna put a lot more weight onto my shoulders, pushing down into my shoulders. And all I'm gonna do is just gradually put more and more weight onto that area before I start the usual process. So all I'm trying to do is load up as much weight onto that ball as I can, as much pressure onto that spot as I can. And just always make sure that you've not slipped off of it to the side. Make sure you're always on the dead center. Right, okay, so I'm contracting the muscle, I'm relaxing the muscle, and each time you contract and relax, that's when you'll find that you just get stuck in just that wee bit further, okay? So don't contract and wince. Contract, relax, it's sore, it's horrible, but try your best to relax, as in truly relax. Even though when you relax, that's when the pain kicks in usually. So it does, it takes a good bit of thought. Like I say, if you feel pretty tired or drained after doing this sort of stuff, I'll tell you now, pain is exhausting, <laughs> okay? Pain takes it out of you. <sighs> and there's certainly plenty of it around here. So now that I've done a wee bit of that, putting the pressure on, contract and relax, I'm going to get that arm straight up, point it towards the sky. Making sure my elbow's locked out, okay? Making sure my shoulder stays in the joint as I move it throughout this. So I'm going to obviously start moving it above my head, 
But what I want to make sure is that I don't start bending my arm and that I don't start shrugging my shoulder. Okay, so my shoulder stays in the joint. I'm trying to mobilize my body the way it's meant to work, the way I want it to work. And again, if you've been keeping up with these, you know by now that my shoulder joint should move freely and independently. It should not have to shrug my shoulders up. And if it does, it's because we've got problems going on elsewhere that we have been working on to address. So straight up, it's usually for me right now, again, just so you're at least knowing what I'm going through. <laughs> It's when I've got that arm straight above my head, as in going back the way. That, for me, that's the worst area there. That's just brutal. Okay, then when I bring it across, a few crunches. Because, like I say, this movement of our arm, it's smashing and it's flossing. We're holding on that spot and it's just letting that muscle grind around and be pulled around and move around while we're holding it on that spot. And it's just going to help smash up and break up that problem area all the more. Okay? But... It's pretty nasty, as I'm sure most of these will be experiencing right about now. Okay, keep it going. We're nearly done. Last few seconds. So we're just throwing in a wee bit of mobility work before we do upper body. Why? Because it's important. And I want you to know as well how it works. Okay, how to make it work. So we do the mobility work first. Get your foam rolling done first if you're ever making up a little routine. Right, relax there for yourself. Again, working on your problem areas. Do the foam rolling first and then, and then we get the stretching in, okay? So the flexibility usually comes second. It doesn't have to, but it's better that way. So now you're gonna need your bench and now we're gonna move in to the flexibility stuff. Okay, you know the score. Get your bench. Get a mat for your knees and the idea is it's my triceps, I'm trying to get on the bench here, my triceps. So I'm going to get myself so that my elbows are on the bench, off seat, chair, whatever you've got. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what height it is, as long as it's getting you raised off the ground. Then I'm leaning on my triceps. Look at my hands. My hands are behind my head. What's that doing? That's going to lengthen out my triceps, which in turn is going to lengthen out my upper back muscles. Those are latissimus dorsi that run to the side of your back, well they don't run to the side, but you'll feel as if they do on this stretch with the side of the armpits. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to push through, and it doesn't take much before you feel this. To enhance this stretch, to take it further, put your knees further away, which is going to load much more weight onto your arms. What we don't want to do is, again, if you look at me now, I don't want to overextend my back. Okay, so look at the state of that. That's not what I want. I'm trying to keep my spine nice and neutral, Keep a bit of tension on my core, but push my body through my arms. Don't overextend the spine. Pretty simple stretch. Won't take long before you feel exactly what we're meant to be feeling here. Focus on your breathing and relax. So this stretch here, you'll feel it on the outside of your armpit, running in to what will feel like the armpit and running into the back of your arms. This is a big problem area for a lot of people. Again, shoulders are very complicated. You know, there could be many reasons as to why you can't get your arms straight locked out above your head with your shoulder blades pulled together and your shoulders relaxed. Many reasons. But quite often or not, this is the area that's tight. Okay, and if this area is tight and you can't fully extend your arms above your head, this is the area that usually pulls your arms back down and limits you from doing that. And that then in turn causes you to shrug your shoulders when you try to lock your arms up overhead. Okay, so we're taking ourselves out of this one. And again, it's pretty nasty, you know. That is a pretty nasty stretch if you get it on properly. And I've got pretty decent overhead mobility and I can get a damn good stretch from that. So if your overhead mobility needs work, you should be able to get a damn good stretch from that. It's about relaxing into it. Now we're going to do this one because it's very similar but I just feel it hits it in a different way and it lets us really focus on getting a much better stretch on the area as a whole. So I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to walk my hands out in front of me. Again, keep these elbows locked out. Keep the arms straight. Keep the shoulder in the joint. Don't let this happen when we're doing the stretch here, okay? We're trying to mobilize and move our body the way it's meant to. So I'm going to walk out with the hands. I'm going to get my right hand. Boom. I'm going to get my left hand and I'm going to put it on top of my right hand. Then I'm going to slide my right hand out so that now my left hand is at the bottom. I'm going to take my right hand, I'm going to put it on top. Whack. Right, okay, everybody. 
without, okay, don't do this now. Don't then square yourself off so that your hands are out in front of you. The reason we've just done that is because this left arm now is running across her body. That's not on accident, that's on purpose, okay? So now I want you to push down, okay? Push down, push down, push down. And again, try to focus on the stretch. You'll feel it, you'll feel the area we're stretching. So you do what you have to do to enhance it. If you feel that, you know what? If I twist this way, if I twist that way, it makes it better. There's no right or wrong here. I want you to think about pushing your hands away from you, pulling your body away from your hands, and completely relaxing, okay? If you get this one right, it's pretty nasty. Get the arms as straight as you can. Again, for this last bit, push. Push the hands away from you. Pull your body away from your hands, lengthen all that out while you're trying to push down. Good. And I want you to slowly relax out of that one. Good. Before you move into the next side, just get your arms. Throw them across your chest, throw them above, okay? And hopefully that feels okay for you. Hopefully that feels good. It's a very important stretch, okay? We all walk about with tightness in our shoulder, which in turn starts to affect our posture. A lot of us naturally start to stoop forwards, okay? And then we lose all that flexibility in the muscles around here and here. And all sorts of nasty things happen, okay? That's where the easiest way to identify if there's a problem is if you stand up nice and tall, you've got your shoulder blades together, good form, good posture, and you cannot put your arms straight above your head, locked out straight, while keeping your spine neutral and keeping the shoulders down and in the joint. If you look a bit more like this or this, look at the spine. Okay, you've got a lot of mobility work that needs to be done. It's in your interest to get it done. Okay, whether you do any sort of exercise or not, if all that starts to get all tight, you're going to start having bother with your back. All these muscles are going to weaken and you're going to end up looking a bit decrepit before your time's due, okay? Right, into the next side. Arms out in front. Arms out in front. Left hand, you're going to take your right hand and put it on top of it. You're going to slide your left hand out. Put your left hand on top of your right hand and boom, you've got your starting position. Push yourself away from your arms. Push your arms nice and straight. Pull your body back and get down towards that ground, okay? And again, it's your stretch. Play around with it. Do what you do to get the best stretch out of this. Don't make it easier. Don't make it comfortable. Get the best quality stretch you can. For me, I can get my forearms on the ground so that it's less of a stress position. Forearms on the ground, but make sure if you've got your forearms on the ground, you're locking those elbows out by pushing your body away. Good. Focus on your breathing. Trying to take these stretches further. Enhance them, make them better. Don't just hold a half ass position, remember. And that takes a bit of thought. Good. Let's all relax out of that one. Fantastic. Good work. Shake the arms out. Okay. And that leads us naturally, working on the same area, that leads us naturally onto the triceps, the back of the arm, okay? Again, if we've got a lot of tightness in the triceps, these muscles can't lengthen out properly. When you try to straighten your arm, they're gonna pull it down, okay? You're gonna struggle to lock those elbows out. So on that note, the tricep stretch, I'm gonna walk up to the wall, but I'm gonna show you the principles of it before we start. If you're happy, get it done. Get straight into it. So I'm gonna get my arm up, I'm gonna pull it down onto my back, then keeping the elbow pointing up as high as I can, keeping the shoulder in the joint, 
get the other arm and use it to pull it down. If, however, you've got a wall like I have behind me, instead of using the arm, you can use a wall, okay, which is going to help enhance the stretch a little bit. So all I need to do is walk over to my wall, plant the elbow on it, so now I don't need to use my arm. It's got the same effect, but this arm's nice and chilled. Better thing with the wall is, if you just walk away and lean into it, so it kind of looks like I'm just, you know, chilling out, hanging out as you do. Make sure your elbow stays nice and high up that wall. Make sure your posture stays right. Why am I saying that? Because you might find that you start doing stupid and weird things like this, okay? Yep. Keep yourself nice and tight. Keep the elbow pointing up. Keep the shoulder blade pulled together. That's important. The shoulder blade is pulled into your rib cages and don't start leaning forward or arching the back, okay? So I'm leaning into it a bit. Don't need to go crazy. And again, focus on your breathing. Make sure you are completely relaxed. And where you feel this is really dependent on where you're tight. You might still feel it in the same kind of area as the previous two stretches, or you might actually feel it on the triceps themselves. It just depends how tight you are. Play around with your position, okay? Don't just hold one position. Always look to try and make it better. And once you find the best and optimal position for you, that's when you just try to take it further and further and further. Okay, and again, it depends how mobile you actually are, how flexible you actually are. So you take it to a point, some people might be feeling a lot of discomfort and pain, other people might, it just might feel good. But either way, you're getting something from it. This is the triceps. Back of the arm. Okay, all those pressing movements with press-ups, any overhead press, dips. These are the big muscle group involved in them. So they do get tight, they do get shortened. So what we're doing here is just lengthening them out. Good, and I'm going to change arms. But before I do, as always, it's just good practice. Just shake out, okay? You don't need to go straight into the other side. Let the blood flow back in, okay? And now I'm going to be rude and turn my back to you. You know the stretch, but then at least you can see what's happening from the back. Arm up. Try and touch down the back, but make sure you don't let the shoulders round. So don't go all the way down to the point you look like me now, okay? Make sure you're nice and tall, nice and proud. Straight away, you might even feel that stretch, and then use the wall as an anchor for that elbow, and then just step out for the wall a wee bit so that you're leaning into it, just to get a better stretch on it. But when you're leaning into it, again, make sure you're not doing anything weird with your hips and you're, you know, you're being lazy with it. Keep good, tall posture. So upper body focus today. So what we've not yet done at this moment in time, as you watch this now, we've not done actually that much mobility work with the upper body. We've done lower back, of course, which is technically part of it. We've done a wee bit of the overhead overhaul. And we've done some of the upper back. But we've yet to get into the limbs. Yet to get into the forearms, yet to get into the triceps, biceps, chest. Okay, so that's all still to come. There's still a lot. Relax there, everybody. There's still a lot for us to do. You know, it's a never-ending process. However, like I keep saying, while you're quickly resting there, if you've got problems with, say, you've got a lot of pain in here, your chest area, don't be sitting waiting for me to come round to doing chest in the mobility work. As you've noticed, in all the areas that we're working on with the foam roller and the ball, it's the same techniques, okay? It's the same techniques. It's just muscle. You're looking for problem areas in the muscle. So if you are getting areas that are pain, such as, you know, triceps, forearms, elbows, um, don't wait for me to come around to do it. You know what to do. All you need to do, don't overthink it. Don't try to look for specific muscle groups. If you're feeling pain or discomfort in a meaty part of your body, the muscle, stuck into it. You know what to do. Again, I think a lot of people maybe think, overthink this stuff. Use the techniques as long as you're, as long as you're dishing out some pain on that area, you're probably going to get a bit of benefit from it. Right, moving on, we're chest, okay? Chest. So we're kind of doing it in a nice systematic way this morning. So I'm going to lie flat. Again, I've found this is the best way to do your chest without any bands or anything like that. Getting the arm out 90 degrees before you roll into the arm. Again, think about that shoulder joint. We don't want it rounded. We want that shoulder blade pulled in, shoulder in the right position, 
and then I'm going to start rolling my body towards my arm, but making sure I keep that palm firmly planted on the floor, okay? So it's pretty simple. Just don't rush into it and lose that form. I want you to think about shoulder blade. Shoulder blade, shoulder blade, shoulder blade. It's squeezed in. I'm not rounding my shoulder. I'm keeping my chest nice and tall, nice and proud as I rotate round. What you do with your legs, etc., is really up to you because it is a case of you're going to hit a limit pretty quick and all I'm trying to do is enhance the stretch. So it's a case of maybe spinning your legs round, using this arm to maybe push into the ground, just to enhance that stretch any way you can. And again, focus on keeping the palm flat on the floor of the arm that we're stretching out. So push into it, keeping the chest proud as you're rolling into this arm. Don't let the chest dip down. Now, you might not feel it in the chest as such, it just depends where it's more tight. You might feel it in the shoulder. You might even feel this running down the bicep into the forearm. And that's okay. But we will be hitting it. We want to be feeling like we're getting it deep in that chest. So just make sure that you're keeping the chest up proud as you're rolling. And just make sure that you're actually taking it as far as you possibly can. Taking it as far as you can, and then taking it further systematically, okay? A wee bit further, focus on your breathing, a wee bit further, focus on your breathing, okay? No pain, we should not be feeling pain. With stretching, discomfort, yes, but we shouldn't be getting pain. Ease out there, okay? And if you want to shake your arms out, you can, but I'm just going to get into the other side. So arm out, 90 degrees, get my shoulders fixed in the right position, nice and tall, nice and proud with the chest, and then start rolling while maintaining that nice proud chest. So again, don't start dropping the chest down as if you were, you know, slouched. Keep it proud, keep it pushed up and proud as you're rolling round. Keep the palm flat on the ground. Okay, and again, it's just a case of twisting your body round into it. Try to use your legs to kind of throw them round so that they're kind of leaning that way so you've got a bit of body weight using leverage. But then with this arm, the spare arm, just push it into the ground so that you can take it even further. And again, you focus on the breathing while holding that point of not being able to take it any further and you should find that you are able to take it ever so slightly more and more. Okay, discomfort, yes, pain, no. Pain, foam rolling, okay, where myofascial release work, you're going to get pain, okay, that is pain. That is a case of that isolated pain. We know what we're supposed to be feeling. It's the kind of pain we're expecting, okay, and the more of that we can inflict, the better. With, with stretching, shouldn't be getting pain, okay? We should not be inflicting pain. So if you feel any pain, make sure you're not pushing through it and just stop. Discomfort, yes, absolutely. Taking the muscles to the point which they don't want to go any further. We've got to try and gently persuade them that they can go further. And that is going to come at the cost of a fair bit of discomfort, depending on what muscle group it is. This one, probably not too bad on the grand scheme of things. Okay, now we're going to ease out. Good. Right, okay. So that is us so far. You know, we've done a little bit of work on there. Hopefully your neck's feeling the benefit from, from lying on that ball. The spine as a whole, um, upper back, the thoracic spine, we've foam rolled it. We got stuck into the upper back muscles. Okay, we've got stuck into the shoulders, the chest, the triceps. Now we're going to do the biceps, but the biceps, it's one that you can't really get a great deal of a stretch on. So, well, we can, but without any equipment as such. So, let's get the arms out to the sides. You're standing up tall and proud. Like I say, as if you're about to part the seas. Get the palms facing up towards the sky. Biceps, everybody knows what the biceps are, for goodness sake. Push them up towards the sky. Keeping the biceps facing up towards the sky, I want you to get the palm of the hands and rotate them forwards and round and round and round until your hands look a bit weird like mine. And by pushing those biceps up and rotating those palms round, you're going to feel that stretch running across here. Okay, that's exactly what we're after. Now, you just have to do your best to get the most out of this one. How do we enhance it? Imagine you're trying to dislocate your own elbow just by using the force of the muscles. Okay, so really try and almost bend 
the elbow the wrong way, just using the power in your arms while rotating those hands round and round and round. So obviously it's right arm goes anti-clockwise, left arm rotates clockwise. And try and keep the shoulders relaxed, okay? Push up, take it far as far as you can. So again, we do get a lot of tightness in the biceps. In fact, most of us do. And the quick test is, if you let your arms hang naturally down, and you've got a slight kink in the elbow, you really shouldn't have a slight kink in the elbow, but it's the bicep that causes that, okay? So, on that note, relax. Let the arms relax, okay? And you'll probably notice that there is a slight bend in your elbow, okay? Really shouldn't be the case. It should be completely straight and relaxed, but again, we've got a bit of tightness. So that's just to demonstrate that if your biceps are real tight, you'll probably find that your arms are even higher up, which ain't no good, okay? That's no good. Anyway, forearms. Let's get stuck into the forearms, the nasty one, okay? Even though it's not that bad, it's just horrible when you come out of it. So if you've got a tight watch on, either loosen it or take it off or move it higher up your wrist. We don't want that restricting this one. Easy. All I'm doing is palms flat, but my fingertips facing back the way. So I'm on my knees, as you can see, and my fingertips are facing back the way, okay? As we discovered, some people have been doing this wrong for a very long time. God knows how they managed it. Um, if you're doing it like this and going back the way and you're wondering why you don't feel anything, that's why you're doing it very wrong. So get your fingertips, get them facing towards your knees, okay? So they're facing directly back. Think about the palm. Punch it down, make sure it's flat. And all I'm going to do is just start shifting back the way. Don't need to go far. And then, oh my word, feel it. It's horrible. It's nasty. So you're taking it as far back as you can. Stay relaxed. This is a classic one, just like the ankles. Just like when we do the ankles, it's very easy for, it to, to, for us to fight this one, as in my muscles start tensing up against it. So all I'm doing is I'm leaning back, leaning back, leaning back. Feeling that stretch running up my wrists and into my forearms, okay? Stay relaxed, focus on your breathing and just try to take it further and further and further. And it is, it's nasty. It just depends how nasty it is. Well, how nasty it is really just depends on how tight it is as well. So we do, we hold a lot of... 